Hey, how's it going? Uh, I just figured today would be a great day to try to get some of these contest entries knocked out finally. So I know a lot of people out there have contests going on. And I definitely wanted to participate to some of my appreciation for everybody and their uh, content that they have out there. Uh, so the first channel I'll talk about is Comic Book Champ. Uh, I have recently subscribed to him, so I haven't seen a ton of his videos, but I always see him in like the live chats and stuff. So I definitely wanted to show him some support because I thought he had a pretty good idea for a contest. So his uh, contest request was recommend a storyline that has ended, or um, I guess just any type of comic book that has ended. So I decided to pick Chu. Uh, this is the Omnivore Edition hardcover. So there are six of these um, Omnivore Edition hardcovers total. And I actually do have all six of them over there, but I figured uh, just for the sake of this video, I'd just show the first one because if you're just trying to get into the book, you can either get this or just a trade with, I think, the first five or six issues of Chew in it, which is, I, I can't recommend this series enough. Um, and actually, if you guys do run into the creators at the convention, like Rob Gilroy, he's very nice. He'll do a head sketch and pretty much any of these hardcovers. He actually, I, I've got these signed by all six of them, and he actually put on a little quick doodle and all six of them, so him and John Lehman are super nice. Um, so as you can see, he signed that there as well. Um, so I guess just to give a quick description of this book, it, it's absolutely nuts. Um, and the art style, it's probably not for everybody, but I think it's absolutely perfect for this type of book. Uh, basically, the main character's name is Tony Chu, and he exists in a world where an avian flu caused by, I guess, overproduction of chickens uh, killed off 23 million people. So now agencies like the FDA, the USDA are as, you know, powerful as the FBI, I guess. So they send out people to like, you know, arrest people for violations and black market chicken trading and that type of stuff. And then on top of it, there are people with food-based superpowers. So for instance, Tony can eat anything and, you know, in his mind, he sees how it was produced, where it came from and how it's handled. So just eating, you know, the basic type of meal is you know makes him crazy basically so on the cover of this for instance he's eating a finger because he's researching basically a dead body uh, and to do that he can eat a body part and figure out how the person was murdered so um it's a pretty insane book to say the very least and then i just love the outbreaks <laughs> i'm sorry that says outbreaks there it, i just love the backgrounds uh, that gilroy draws in this too it just says like for instance service eat our food at your own risk <laughs> So I just flipped to a random page, and I know there, I was looking for it, but I couldn't find it. It might be in another volume where basically he just puts screen images from movies he likes in the background. Like one time they went to this restaurant and they had a picture of Chung Lee from Bloodsport on a background. So it just, I immediately started laughing. So really no other book out there has made me laugh as hard as when I'm reading this. And it has its serious ones too. It's not all, I wouldn't say it's a strictly comedy based book, but it has, a, there's a lot of, this is a very deep book, in my opinion, so check these out uh, if you haven't already. Uh, can't recommend Chew enough. Um, my next contest entry will be for Contender. So if you guys don't know Contender, um, like I say, he's another one of those guys who's usually in the live chats, especially the auctions stuff. Always been up big boy books. Uh, and he's actually participated on the other side of auctions, selling his big boy books and stuff like that. So uh, he doesn't joke around when it comes to slabbing and getting those high-grade books. So... I decided to participate in his contest as well. So, unfortunately, I have a punching glove. So, there you go, contender. There's a fist for you. <laughs> um, so, for his contest, he just says, spell out your name with books. Uh, so, I decided to spell out my screen name, see what are 19. Um, so, I got, first off, Crisis. Oh, sorry for that mylar glare, I guess. Um, Crisis on Infinite Earth, number one. Awesome George Perez cover. I actually got this one signed by Marv Wolfman and George Perez. So I will, this is one of the first, you know, maxi series I ever read as a kid. So I absolutely have always had a special place in my heart for Crisis. So I decided to start off with Crisis for sure. Absolutely amazing book. If you guys have been living under a rock for the past, God, 30 years, really? <laughs> wow. That just hit me. Uh, next up, I do need to rebag this. I apologize. Wonder Woman 219. I believe this is the one where she kills off Maxwell Lord after a uh, whole thing with Maxwell Lord and Blue Beetle. She... Uh, has to fight Superman because Maxwell Lord has gained control of Superman using his powers. So I just really like these J.G. Jones covers, and actually I got a J.G. Jones signature on there. Um, so just rolling across this while I was looking for W. So I always love those J.G. Jones covers, so I picked that up. Next up, 
Origin number one, uh, signed by Paul Jenkins, the writer. I haven't heard much about Origin since it came out and, you know, the movie bombed and all that stuff, so I kind of forgot about this, and then I was flipping through my books looking for it, and I'm like, oh yeah, Origin. One point, this thing was selling for like 50 bucks, and now it's in dollar bins, but uh, I'm still very glad to have it. So there's Origin number one. Next up, uh, Outcast number one. So this is uh, one of Robert Kirkman's newer books. It's actually been a Cinemax series that I've only seen the first episode. And actually, it wasn't too bad of a show. Uh, I don't know if everybody out there has seen it or not. And actually, this one's signed by Paul Azaceta. I think I got him to sign that last year or two years ago at C2E2. So I actually really enjoyed this book. One day I'm going to get the hardcovers for this too uh, so I can finish the story. But I think I've already read like the first story. Or maybe I've read two storylines worth. But I really did enjoy that. And why not? There's a second issue right there also signed. So there we go. Uh, next up, got Joseph Michael Enser's Don. It's a 2005 convention sketchbook. And the reason I pulled this out, I just really liked uh, Joseph Michael Enser's signature. I forgot how nice that thing was. Um, and I kind of forgot I had this in my collection too. I was just flipping through uh, the D section of my boxes back there. I'm like, wow, this is a pretty awesome looking book. So Never been a huge Don fan. I mean, I every time I saw him as a kid, I'd pick him up because they're kind of hard to come by, at, you know, in my local shops and stuff. So usually, if I could get my hands on these, I would. So there's that uh, for a Adventure Comics number one. So kind of more on Connor Ken a little later here. Uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, this one is signed by Francis Manipal. So absolutely like this book. I actually have the hardcover for it too, even though it's very small. My only gripe about this when it first came out, it was one the around the first time they started charging $3.99 for DC books. So I didn't buy as uh, many of this run as I should have. But I once I, you know, went back got in dollar bins, I absolutely did love that adventure comics run by Johns and Manipal. So check this out if you haven't already. Uh, next up, got a Red Sonia Tula Lote cover signed by Tula Lote. Uh, after meeting her at C2E2, I'm definitely gonna try to show her off her work as soon or God, sorry. One of these days I'm going to learn how to edit. Until then, I apologize. Uh, I am absolutely going to show off her work as much as possible. So, love that cover. I'll be seeking out more of her stuff soon, hopefully. Uh, next up, Deadpool number three. I got this one signed by Brian Posehn, Jerry Duggan, and Tony Moore. I didn't know which one. I figured I'd just show both covers, two and three. Uh, one's hanging on my wall, so I didn't take that down for the sake of the video, I suppose. I just love this one, though. He's like punching or kicking zombie Nixon and fighting his dog that's also a zombie. So just to show you how crazy this book gets when, you know, they hired Brian Posehn to write Deadpool. You knew to expect the unexpected, I suppose. And then here he's just getting ready to get into a gunfight with a bunch of animals. So, yeah, fun run. And then I didn't have any comics to start with the number 19, so I just picked uh, Week 52, Issue 19. Uh, this is the one where Skeets turns on Booster Gold because I think he is taken over by what was it like mastermind basically or something like that it's been a little i want to reread all these again so it's been probably since about 2007 2008 since i com uh, completed my reading of this so i'm definitely gonna read these again but this i actually this one there was before i started the video and i really really enjoyed this specific issue it's, it's pretty good so 52 don't forget this existed it's awesome all right, so there was my name and comic book, so hopefully Contender was happy with that. And my last entry for the day will be from Bad Avenger. Once again, um, he is hitting 500 subs, and uh, I just subscribed to his channel, so I've been kind of checking his stuff out on a backlog. So pretty cool content so far, I've got to say. I'm glad I'm subbed up to him. And for his contest, it says, What character do you most identify with? Uh, what story and most favorite? And then throw three, I picked five spec books. I didn't see it, those three until I reread this. It says, show three spec books in the last five years. I'll show you five. Why not? Um, <coughs> sorry. Jeez. Uh, so for my favorite character in story, if you guys have seen my previous stuff, you know, Connor Kent is one of my favorite uh, characters of all time. He is right there on that cover. Um, so mainly I picked... Teen Titans number one to talk about Connor Kent a little bit and his story arc in this book because uh, I think he had a stronger story arc in this book than any other book he had ever been in. Uh, so this is the third print. I got it signed by Jeff Johns because this is the only one I had on me at the time when I met him even though I've gotten every print but that color Mike Turner book. I'm still looking for that. Uh, but in this one, I mean, I guess just to relate to the character, um, Superboy throughout this series, he, it seems like he's just trying to find his place in the world. 
Um, you know, he was kind of groomed to become Superman, and obviously Superman's not going anywhere ever. And I think he even realizes that in this comic book, so he's kind of trying to figure out, you know, where, do, where does he fit into all this? And, you know, it's just kind of like, you know, anyone else out there in life trying to, you know, I was collecting these in my early 20s, I believe. Uh, so, you know, around that time I was getting out of college and, you know, didn't really know what to do with myself. So kind of like Connor Ken, I guess I was trying to find my place in the world like he is in these books. Um, so I guess I would relate to him more than anybody else in comics. But in this storyline, I mean, he goes from being, you know, that 90s generic character we all know and love to, you know, something even deeper than that. And it also, on top of it, in this one, he finds out that not only is he a clone of Superman, but he's got Lex Luthor's DNA in him, and that really messes with him psychologically. And actually, I think Tim Drake's the one who finds out for him. It's not just him who finds out. Uh, so his best friend's the one with the knowledge. And he's actually, obviously, surrounded by his girlfriend, Wonder Girl, and, you know, Bart Allen. And, you know, basically all of his best friends are getting ready to judge him severely once all of this leaks out. And, of course, it's all over the course of time in this book up until he, you know, gives his life and identity cry or I'm sorry, infinite crisis. Uh, so I would say favorite story arc would probably be this through about issue 30. Actually, after issue 33 is pretty good, but I think 33 was the one where, you know, Superboy gets killed off in infinite crisis and then they do the whole like Titans East versus the newer, new, new, new Teen Titans, whatever they want to call themselves at that point. Uh, basically the one year later Teen Titans, I guess would be a better name right now. Uh, but I absolutely adore this book. Can't recommend it enough. Uh, one of my top favorites of all time, the Jeff Johns Teen Titans run uh, with Connor Kent in it. Bring them back. Come on, DC. Really? I mean, like, really? It's been seven years now. Where's Connor Kent? Come on. Jeez. All right. So, like I said, I found out five spec books. Usually more spec books. I just go toward the independent or, you know, more of that type of stuff. I know I got one Vertigo, maybe two Vertigos in here, I think. Um, I'm not the best at picking up spec books, obviously. Otherwise, I'd have like 10 copies of Thanos 13 or whatever issue that was, non-lenticular, um, and then be selling those on eBay. But I don't really collect like that. But anyway, I tried my best. Um, so I picked mostly number ones of just stuff that may have properties in the future or just hot books that have kept on going. So the first one's Injection. Uh, Warren Ellis, and I think his name's Declan Schlavi, something like that. And Jordy Belair worked on this book. So this book seems to be fairly, fairly popular. I don't, I think it's been, I think all these books came out in the last five years. If they haven't, I apologize. Uh, but it feels like they just came out yesterday to me, I guess. So injection number one, it's an image title. Uh, next up, December, Descender number one by Jeff Lemire and Dustin Wynn. I hear a lot about this book. Eventually, I do want to get trades and hardcovers of this as well, uh, because I see this on a you know a lot of uh, bins and stuff. Just a lot of people collecting Descender books. So I think this issue one, maybe one day if they do something more with this property, could take off. We'll see. Obviously. Uh, next up, uh, the Wake Number One. Actually, got this signed by Sean Gordon Murphy. I think because of the popularity that Sean Gordon Murphy is gaining because of Batman White Knight. Um, I think once people figure out that he did a book with Scott Snyder, that more people are going to be looking for this whole series, especially issue one. So I would say in terms of actually specking on something, this would probably be my top pick in my little stack here in terms of, you know, something going up in value, I suppose. Uh, so if you guys see this at a dollar, but why not pick it up? Uh, cause still, I think it's still really cheap right now. I could be wrong, but I think it's still a dollar book. Uh, next up, Deadly Class. Got this one signed by Rick Reminder. Uh, this was just picked up to series by Sci-Fi Channel or whatever they're calling that channel now. I still call it the Sci-Fi Channel, sorry. Um, but this one was just picked up, I guess, last week for series. So definitely swoop these up as soon as possible. I, Like I said, I said, if the series turns out to be halfway decent, this book will probably be in demand. And then my last one, I uh, picked out Reborn Number 1 by Mark Millar and Greg Capullo. I think this book was already heating up a little bit. I'm not sure if it sells for tons. Um... But I, with the whole uh, deal that Mark Millar did with Netflix, I'm guessing it's only a matter of time. Maybe within the next five years we see a series or a movie of this. Probably a movie, I think, would be. I, I couldn't see a series dragged out because it's only, I think, five or six issues. And it's a solid read. I don't think it's anything, you know, blockbuster or special. Obviously, the art's great. It's Greg Capullo. Uh, but I did enjoy it for the most part. <clears throat> and then last up, 
Uh, that's all my contest entries, but I did want to take time out to appreciate one more YouTuber, and that's Symphonic Elk. He recently had a contest. Um, I think it just ended last week or two weeks ago, something like that. And it was, pro I, I haven't been in this community maybe more than six months in terms of viewing people's videos and that stuff, but I've never seen a contest more generous to the people who participated in it than his contest. Like, I'm still blown away. I didn't realize, and I think he even did say it in his first video, but I maybe I just didn't believe it. <laughs> but he said, you know, basically by entering his contest, you're just going to win. Like, and I think he had 30 some odd people participate in his contest and every single person got something. Like, that's just unheard of, so... I'm not worthy, sir. <laughs> so awesome job on the contest. And then just as support for, I think his YouTuber name is Gills311. I can't remember the numbers, but you just call him Gills. Um, you guys can go to his channel as well. I'll link that below. Um, and then just the support that Symphonic Elk shows to Gills and, you know, the support he's showing to his buddy. I think he was sending him books for auction to support that charity for Gills' friend. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I did want to get into my contest winning. I actually got this in the mail today, so it only took like two days to ship. So thank you, thank you, Symphonic Elk, for Ultimate Spider-Man number one. I cannot believe, cannot believe you gave this to me. This is absolutely awesome. Like, I couldn't picture this in any contest at all like this. And you put it in your contest, and I actually won it. <laughs> so... I'll be honest, like, usually when I do these contests, I'm not like, oh, I'm going to do this contest so I can try to win that book or what have you. Usually I just like to show support to the new channels I've been watching and that type of stuff. But I'll be perfectly honest, like, when I was watching this contest, I'm like, man, it'd be sweet to actually get that Ultimate Spider-Man number one. Because when I started collecting again in the early, early 2000s, probably 2002, 2003, uh, when I was starting off in college, uh, one of the first books I ever read was... Ultimate Spider-Man, I think it was 34. It was right around when they started the Ultimate Venom story arc. And I really liked it. I tried to get every back issue I could after reading that one. And it was, the, it was probably the first time I had enjoyed the comic book Spider-Man. Because growing up, I enjoyed, obviously, the, the first and the second Tobey Maguire movie. And I liked the cartoon series enough, even though I thought it was a little convoluted after a while. But the comics, I think I had to hop in during the Clone Saga, and, and we all know it sucked. <laughs> so, uh, and then, I mean, if, the less talked about 90 Spidey, the better. I'm sure there's a few gems in there, but everything I picked up, 90 Spidey kind of sucks. So, when it came to Ultimate Spider-Man and Brian Bendis and Mark Bagley's content on that, I was just blown away. I absolutely loved Ultimate Spider-Man, so I got all the, you know, all the trades I could, all the individual issues I could. But I, this issue eluded me for the longest time. I mean, it's been probably, I've probably been trying to track this down for 15 years for a decent price. Um, so when I saw this contest video, I was going to do it no matter what, uh, just to show Symphonic Elk support because he does have a phenomenal channel. And he's a phenomenal person. But I was just like, man, it'd be kind of cool to win that. I won't lie. And then, you know, I actually, I didn't know he even had his drawing up until about, uh, I think I was just watching his videos on Sunday. And I'm just like, oh, huh. this that's in the contest. Someone else probably won it like usual. And my name got Drew, and I, I was like, really? Wow. Um, so thank you, Symphonic Elk. I cannot thank you enough for this book. This is, I mean, this is not going anywhere, just so you know. This will be definitely staying in my collection. And I even rebagged it. Made sure to put his little label on there, like in all of his uh, videos where he shows his hauls. He has these little labels that say, like, first parents of whoever, just why it's a key. So I definitely made sure to add his label to my Mylar bag so I knew it came from him. Um, but I'm just, like I said, I am extremely happy to have this book finally. And it couldn't have came from a cooler guy. So once again, thank you, Symphonic Elk. Uh, if you guys haven't subbed him up already, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Go do it now. Just put this video on pause or just turn off the video. I really don't care. <laughs> And go sub him up, watch his stuff, because it's better than mine. Uh, but yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, can't thank you enough. Um, so that includes my community support video. Um, I'll just talk about my contest real quick. I have 10 entrants so far. I believe I am 14 subs away from next price tier. So 14 subs. We'll see how we get. So uh, like I said, it ends May 5th, so I think two weeks and change from today. Uh, whenever you're watching this, so May 5th, if you guys are wanting to participate. Uh, and then just, you know, thank you to all the 10 of these people so far for showing me support and, you know, linking me in below and all that good stuff. Uh, so with that, I'm sorry, I'm approaching 20 minutes. I'm still working on that, guys. I apologize. Uh, so other than that, thank you. Thumbs up.
thumbs down, I guess, for the length again and the coughing and all that crap. Sorry about that. Um, and thanks for watching.